Welcome to Tech in a Car. This is the 120,000 pound Lotus Electre R. Now this is Lotus's electric SUV, electric sports SUV. And I tell you what, I've never driven a Lotus before. And I think this is fantastic just sitting in it. Now, lots of people are concerned that this isn't a true Lotus because Lotus is about lightweight sports cars, just like they were concerned that the Ford Capri isn't a Capri. But the thing is, as I said in that video, the future is what we make it. This car and other cars like it are the future of cars. And you have to judge each car on how it is now, not on the past, because the past, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on your perspective, doesn't inform the future of cars and the technology in them. But there was no technology in cars before, so it can't in any way influence that. This car is an amazing color. I don't know if you can see in the light, but it goes from gray to pink. It is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful color and it's stunning. And I think, honestly, I'm not a fan of gray cars. This car looks sensational. Let's have a quick walk around it and then let's go for a drive. We've got a lot of carbon fiber on here. So this is the top model, the R with over 900 horsepower, zero to 60 in less than three seconds, 120,000 pounds. Look at all of this carbon fiber. It looks amazing. These inlets here, they actually close and open. So these are retracting, they open and close depending on when the aerodynamics is required and the cooling is required. And then we've got these scoops here. We've got these cool slim headlights. Just look at it, just look at it. I think, you know, along with the Lamborghini Urus, this is probably the most aggressive looking SUV there is right now. And the other thing too, what do I love about this? Look at this. This is LiDAR, just like you can see on Google self-driving Waymo cars. We've got a video on that. This is something which Geely, which is a company that owns Lotus and Volvo and all the other companies, <laughs> lots of other companies, not all the other companies, but lots of other companies is putting on their cars. And that is instrumental in self-driving when it comes out. Tesla aren't putting those on their cars, but I think it's a really great thing to have it on because it gives you extra points to use that data from. These wheels look sensational. We've got 22 inch wheels. And the other thing down the side here is, which again, I love is digital cameras. So they're not, normal wing mirrors, their cameras, also clad in carbon fiber, which looks great. And then we've got a long body here, which looks a lot slimmer because of this dual color here between the black roof and the color of the car. And of course, we've got these big haunches over the wheels and we've got an air vent right down here, which brings the air through from the wheels to help with the aerodynamics of the car. The rear of this Lotus continues the carbon fiber down here. Look at this little spoiler at the end there. Look at these two winglets at the top, look really cool. We've got more cameras back there. And we've got these big holes down the side here, like, which again, for aerodynamics, more carbon fiber. So much detail on this car, which I really, really like the lights, uh, light bar all the way across here. I love the details, the aerodynamic details. It just, it's just inside and outside, more little vents here. Inside and outside, there's so much attention to detail, which I really, really like, which is what in my mind makes a car really, really worth the money that they charge. When you get in a car and you see detail like these, like all these little vents, like carbon fiber there, it just, it just adds to the interest and the excitement of the car. Now, what about space in the route? We have a cavernous boot. Maybe that's exaggerating the size slightly but we do have a large boot here with lots of space and you can fit a lot of stuff back here. There's a 12 volt socket here, so you can plug that in there. And there's little hooks and tether points there and you can raise and lower the back of the car if you wanna put stuff in by pressing on there and then pressing on there. So that will bring it up and down. And again, it's all clad in, we're getting in a second, but it's all clad in really nice materials, leather and soft materials and Alcantara. Just, just all really, really, really high quality, which I love. Let's pop inside now. Inside the back, we've got single seats here, which are very comfortable, very beautiful with nice material, carbon fiber on the back of those seats. A screen in the back here, which you can use to adjust the seats, turn the heated seats on and off to adjust the music playing. We've got two cup holders. We've got space here. We've got air vents down here, Alcantara at the top here, beautiful panoramic roof, which lets in all the light. Everything in here looks beautiful and precise and is very, very comfortable. I'm one meter 78 and you can see I've got a lot of space. This is a long car, so I should have space, but it just feels like a very special place. You could be a passenger in the rear 
and feel almost like you're sitting in the front because it's really, really comfortable. Somewhat unusually, I've swapped onto this side so you can just see how beautiful the interior is. Look at this steering wheel, flat bottom, actually top and bottom flat, just like the new Audis, people were complaining about that, it's in the Lotus. All in Alcantara, carbon fiber, the controls here are slightly off, look a bit like the Bugatti Tourbillon. We've got a massive roof which actually tints itself if you press the button, we can do auto transparency. Just look at this quality carbon fiber, really nice high quality switches, we've got the ambient light on it and we've got a little screen here and a little screen on the passenger side. And of course, let's not forget digital mirrors which look great and then look at these kef speakers they look like a piece of artwork this just whole interior these seats everything in here just oozes quality which it is this is the unreal engine running on this car and you can see how smooth it is i can tap on the various options and it will bring up the menus for that option so that's the roof there or the charging panel which i just opened which i didn't want to do <laughs> let's close it or I can lock or unlock the car like that. It's just really, really easy to use. We've got Android Auto, CarPlay, Parking Assist. We've got, again, we've got quick settings. We can go to our maps as well. So it's got everything on here. A bit like a Tesla, it also shows what's going on around you. Really, really nice infotainment system. Very responsive with Unreal Engine, just like you have on the Rivians. We've got our digital wing mirror. We've got a driver's display. And then we've got our display in here. We're in track mode now. So the car's at its lowest setting. You get this red effect here and then this is the beautiful steering wheel that i talked about just look at this attention to detail look at these switches and the carbon fiber and even around the drinks holders you've got this beautiful metallic finish here i'm not sure if it is metal but it looks fantastic just the whole interior is amazing and i want to also show you these speakers look at these speakers they're like a piece of art they really are so beautiful all right let's go for a drive now let's start off in here in our off-road mode, which is gonna raise the suspension on the Lotus Electri so it can handle the bumps in the road a bit better and a bit more comfortably. And you can definitely feel you're higher up and the car definitely handles those holes in the road a bit better, which is interesting. I mean, I can feel the suspension is lifted. I just feel kind of like I'm higher up. It's a weird sensation to explain, but you can just you can just tell it's kind of, kind of strange. <laughs> Not a bad thing. It's just interesting to note that when you look at this and when you think about this car. Now, if we change our mode again and we go into range mode, now it gives us our maximum range. So this car has a WLTP range of about 280 miles, which is fantastic considering it's got a 900 horsepower motor, which gives us a lot of speed. If we change it into our tour mode, then it brings the suspension down a bit and I can feel that again. And we can then go to sport. And when I do sport, the bolsters on the side of the seats squeeze me in. And this car has all the latest driver technology. Let's put it into track mode. <laughs> and there we go. That is 900 horsepower and a lower suspension. Now, I'm not going to, again, test the 0 to 60 time because of the weather here. It's not going to be very fast and it's not very safe. But we do have four-wheel drive. It's giving me a good good push in the back which is amazing and then let's check out these indicator stalks and i really do like this very slim screen i was a bit skeptical about a slim display here you've seen it on some other cars and it doesn't always i think work but on here it's a very high quality and because it's very wide it just feels like you've got all the information you want just in a much smaller space so i like that a lot especially with the ambient lighting just above it you know and this is 900 horsepower Let's check the zero to 60 time. 900 horsepower, go! Whoa! So 3.79 seconds in very wet condition. Uh, this car is very, very fast and very, very keepable and very, very exciting to drive. And it doesn't feel like a heavy car. I know this is a heavy car. It's got a big battery. It's a very large car, but driving it, it doesn't feel that way. It feels like a car which belies its weight. It feels lighter than it should be for its size. I've driven lots of other cars which are similar size, which feel a lot less nimble and a lot heavier than this car does. This car really does not feel like it weighs a lot which is very very interesting you know what 
give me one of these Lotus, I'll have one. This is fantastic. I don't need a car this size, but I think this is fantastic. Just off a short drive now, I think this is fantastic. And I have little doubt that it would live up to its zero to 60 time of less than three seconds, considering how nimble it feels in this track mode, going around the corners like this. I mean, honestly, it's just, this should not be turning in like this. This should not be turning in like this. This is, this is, this truly surprises me with its nimbleness and its handling. Very, very good job, Lotus. Big pothole. So let's just see, we've risen up the suspension and look at that. Like this is as close to off-roading as, as you're gonna get. That should not feel like that. It really shouldn't. That has no right to have such gentle suspension over the potholes at the side of the road there. They were more like, it was more like little lakes by the side of the road. It was like being on the moon. There were craters, there were craters there. When we have it in off-road mode, we get less performance. You have to put it into track to get the full performance, which again, closes the bolsters up, which I like. So we tried the off-road capabilities of this car. We've tried the suspension and the handling. It's, this really, really impresses me. And I'd love one of these. And you know what? I can't wait to see what their saloon version of this is. I say saloon version, the Lotus Sport Saloon, which they've recently put out and also what their other cars are like. But I tell you what, Lotus, continue doing what you're doing because this is really impressive. If you want to see more videos on cars like this, including the Lamborghini Urus SE and other cars, then please click here and here. Thanks for watching.